everyone, this is Juan, I'm the CEO of Ligo. And today we'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, our product that helps banks increase uh, up and cross selling results. Uh, before that, a little bit about the company, uh, the background. We are a tech company based in San Francisco. We've been doing uh, AI technology for the past six years already. Uh, we're a team of already 50 people, mainly data engineers, data scientists, and some business professionals as well, that come from the most uh, recognized technology companies. And uh, we also have technology advisors from MIT regarding artificial intelligence, so just to provide a little bit of, of background. We are based in San Francisco, as I said, but we also have offices in New York, Miami, and Latin America. And some of our advisors and investors are C-levels or founders of very well recognized companies from the uh, Silicon Valley. Do you hear me better now? <laughs> okay. So um, in the big umbrella of AI, our technology focuses specifically in uh, customer behavior analysis and prediction. Uh, we are very focused on really understanding what a customer or a group of customers have done in the past to understand how they might behave in the future. And once we have the data, we can use it to uh, address different business challenges like up and cross selling, reducing churn, or personalization as a concept. Um, so of all these three cases, I would like to focus a little bit more on the up and cross selling uh, side of it. Um, this means how are we helping business line owners increase their sales, their product sales, or how are we helping uh, head of regions increase their market penetration or enhance their customer journey, or even how are we helping banks reduce customer uh, contact costs, right? And the complete solution at a glance has four big modules. The first module is a, a product recommendation module that will tell the bank or the financial institution what is the right product for each of the customers according to how each customer behaves. The second module will tell the bank what is the right moment to get in front of him. When is he about to have that need? The third module uh, tells the bank what is the right channel in which uh, to communicate with him. And the fourth module is a sales speech recommendation module that will analyze different uh, speeches that agents may use and uh, optimize it for each specific case. So how does it all work? How, how do we know what is the right product for each of the customers? This is described in three phases. The first phase will be to do a data mining phase, uh, really analyze the transactions of the past of the bank. We get into their database and really analyze what do people that bought each of the products that the bank is trying to sell have in common? What are the patterns? What are the, the trends that we see there? In that way, we define the profile of the people that buy each of the products. On the other side, as a second step, we will analyze each of the customers uh, and how they behave. We will analyze more than 2,000 variables, uh, considering risk variables, um, bureau variables, transactions, um, behavior with the credit cards, and we will uh, use many data sources to uh, gather around 2,000 variables to make this analysis. So once we have the profile of each of the customers and we have the profile of the people that buy each of the products, uh, we do a matching between those two things and calculate probability of purchase uh, between each customer against each of the products. All this system, uh, this software has machine learning, so uh, with every sale action, that we perform, regardless if it ends in a sale or not, the machine will learn and will retrain the model for next time, and it does this in real time. Um, our solution lives very deep in the back end, in the data lake, so it is really easy for us to integrate with the current CRMs that banks are using, or the contact uh, centered contact tools that they're using, regardless if it is email, chatbots, or the agents on the call center. And uh, everything that happens in this uh, system is displayed on a dashboard where banks can see and get out of the black box situation. Um, the product works for product center approaches and customer center approaches. And the good thing is that uh, we not only tell the bank what is the right product, but the, also the reasons why this is the right product for this customer. So that actually helps agents uh, do more compelling speeches when they sell. Um, at last, uh, we are already working with one of the top 10 banks in the North America, and it took us only 90 days to implement, and we are already producing lifts of 16% increase in credit card sales, and 28% in premium card 
uh, credit card sales. Thank you very much. Can you talk about the training set that you used to actually build the models and whether or not you share data in between clients? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, we only work with the data that the bank already has, or probably if they need to integrate other third-party sources, we will do it. But we don't capture data from outside, from social networks and stuff. So um, since we don't bring new data in, we don't take data out uh, as well. So we don't have to worry about that, and we don't take uh, to our servers the data. Uh, what was the question that you said? <laughs> That's okay, you're Okay, answer. great, amazing. So the space of predictive analytics is pretty busy these days. Yeah. Um, pretty straightforward question. What's differentiating what you're doing compared to the other offerings that are in the marketplace? Absolutely. So we have uh, some pretty unique algorithms, uh, proprietary, that we started developing like six years ago when we started analyzing uh, Facebook profile information to classify people into a thousand different profiles. And we've been uh, building on top of it since that day. That's one of the differentiators. Um, I would say the other one is that uh, a lot of other companies have these black boxes. and uh, We've seen a lot of customers that don't like that. And the third one is that uh, we don't take the data out of your bank. So you don't have to worry about that. I think those are the, the main three ones. Give us uh, more details about, about your um, business model, like how you make money. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have a subscription model. Uh, we have different uh, subscriptions based on the complexity of the case. Um, some, uh, like a simple subscription, will have a dedicated team of three people managing the solution and making sure that everything is perfect during time. A, a bigger and more complex one will have around 10. And our subscriptions include a license to use the solution and also the team that's uh, making sure that everything goes well and it stays updated. How are you grappling with the issue of just, you know, marginal quality of data at the outset of one of your projects. I mean, I, I see the 90 days from inception to you know, delivery of results, but is that the model? Or do you find that it's actually 120 or 130 by the time everybody gets out of their way with the data? Well, it depends on the, how ready is the bank in terms of, da of data readiness. Uh, we've seen some clients that you could actually get in and implement in 90 days and start having the lift in 90 days. And sometimes we have to walk with them through the first steps, like uh, finish building the data lake and uh, do some cleansing and normalization. That extends a little bit, but we're happy to do it if it will lead us to actually be able to Is implement. that included in your subscription model or is that an upcharge? <laughs> no, it's uh, uh, when we do that, we charge an implementation fee for that phase, and then when, once it's ready, we go to the subscription model. Okay. Thank you. Has a geographic uh, variation of consumer behavior been tested as part of your data model? In other words, said another way, do consumers in the southern United States behave differently than consumers in northern United States compared to Canadians? And how much has that been factored into your data model? Yeah, absolutely. So you know what? Our models are a little bit, they don't think exactly in that way as humans would think. They look at 2,000 variables, and they don't really care about what the variables are. Uh, in our experience, uh, geography has have a middle uh, level of prediction. But actually, like, there are more technical things, uh, very specific things that don't make sense to me as a human, but to machines, yes, uh, that were more determinant and predictive of behavior. Yeah. So I'm hearing that the SaaS model actually also includes humans as well. How do you think about scalability and actual productization of what you're doing? Yeah. So uh, out of the 50 people that work in our company, we have a group of engineers that was working on uh, extending the, expanding the product itself because uh, there are, it's a platform, it has a lot of, of tools inside, uh, but, but they can do so much right now. We are trying to expand that so that our times are reduced and the need of people behind the project is, uh, is reduced as well. But uh, I think that for the next two years at least, for the complexity of the banks that we work with, 
they have very unique data sets that need to be, uh, they want it their way, right? So we always have to have an implementation phase in order to address it to that. And also, uh, well, yeah, that. 